Americans held hostage, abandoned behind enemy lines. Day 41. And hey, welcome to Hannity Americans and their families and our allies and green card holders all remain hopelessly abandoned behind enemy lines. And today, after spending most of the week in hiding, Joe Biden finally issued a public statement and even answered four questions. But he's proud of his work in Afghanistan. Mm, I wonder how their families feel. I wonder how the people caught behind enemy lines feel. Now, of course, the reporters were all pre-selected. As per usual, Joe, well, he called their names from his little list. He put to, obviously put together by his staff. And at no point did Joe mention the Americans that he abandoned and left behind to suffer under the Taliban that have now brought back full Sharia law. And that means, yes, the death squads exist. Women and children can't go to school. Girls can't go to school. Uh, women and girls, that is. And nor did he mention his drone strike that killed humanitarians and, uh, yeah, seven children and zero terrorists. Instead, Joe, again, congratulating himself on what was his debacle of a withdrawal from Afghanistan, says he won't make apologies for the way it all went down. Wow, pretty arrogant, Joe. Take a look. There was no easy way to end that. And we're now still getting people out. But it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's really, there's no, no picture book way to say, okay, the war is ended, let's get everybody out and we'll go home. No war has ever ended that way, other than there's been a surrender and it's a totally different circumstance. So anyway, there's a lot, I'm sure, along the line that there are things I could have done better, but I make no apologies for my proposals, how I'm, propo how I'm, how I'm proceeding, and why I think by the end of the year we're going to be in a very different place. There was an easy way. No apologies. Why didn't you take out, when you had full control of Kabul, and the Taliban was only beginning their march and, and running over the Afghan military that you bragged so much about in July. Why didn't you get Americans and their families and green card holders and Afghan allies and our military equipment out in March? Why didn't you do it in April, May, June, July, when you had full control of Kabul and could have done all of that safely and gotten everybody home? You said you wouldn't abandon them, and you did. You should apologize for that, Joe. It's only one small part of his bizarre, rambling, defensive speech where a very irritated-looking uh, Joe Biden attempted to blame, to blame everybody but himself for every crisis he created. He caused them all, you know, scolding Border Patrol and people that won't listen to his one-size-fits-all uh, medicine from a guy that never went to medical school and, frankly, was a horrible student on top of all of it. First, with COVID cases spiking all around the country, 300 percent higher than last year, condemning every American who has not received a COVID-19 vaccine, lecturing them. What about people with rare conditions, Joe? What about people that just had COVID and it's recommended they not get the vaccine while their antibody level is high? According to Joe Biden, they're destroying this country. And now more vaccine mandates are headed your way. Thanks to Joe, Dr. Joe. They are causing a lot of damage. The unvaccinated overcrowd our hospitals, overrunning emergency rooms and intensive care units. The unvaccinated also put our economy at risk, recovery at risk, causing unease in the economy around the, and uh, causing unease around the kitchen table. The refusal has cost all of us. The refusal to get vaccinated has cost all of us. And I'm moving forward to vaccination requirements wherever I can. And why, Joe, are you controlling all the monoclonal antibodies and rationing it, uh, considering it's shown such great success? I know you only heard about them a week and a half ago. Federal mandates are not only unconstitutional, but they're also deeply unpopular, especially for whatever reason, I don't know, like New York City, African-Americans in New York City, it's a little over 30 percent that have been vaccinated. But according to Joe, he's just following his science, unless, of course, it interferes with his political agenda. Today, what is being called a, quote, boost for Biden's campaign to give a broad segment of Americans access to boosters, the CDC director single-handedly actually overruled her own agency, the CDC advisory panel, to recommend COVID booster shots for a variety of American workers. And according to even the New York Times, it's highly unusual, this decision. So what, politics first, science second, Joe? 
It's also highly unusual that the Biden administration is rationing these therapeutics, monoclonal antibody treatments like Regeneron in red states. Now, Governor Ron DeSantis, who actually sent up centers all throughout the state of Florida, now he's had to go out on his own and buy them himself. Joe never mentioned these until last week. But for Joe Biden, finding someone to blame for his failures, that's more important than protecting American lives. Look at the border, for example. It doesn't take a genius to figure out that is an unmitigated disaster of his making and has been for seven months. Yeah, a real crisis that they've been denying. Thousands of migrants packed together in horrific, squalid conditions. Many infected with COVID-19. Women and children are being trafficked. Physical sexual assault is occurring on a large scale. Virtually none of the migrants undergo any proper vetting whatsoever about radical backgrounds. There's no COVID-19 testing. And people are then being released into the U.S. and no vaccine mandate for them either. This week, Asian illegal immigrants attacked pilots and ICE officials on multiple transport flights. Clearly, health and background checks are very important. But according to Joe Biden, the real crisis, well, he's going after Border Patrol agents and their horses. They are fighting back fiercely, saying this is all a lie. But here's what Joe is saying. Given what we saw at the border this week, have you failed in that promise? And this is happening under your watch. Do you take responsibility for the chaos that's unfolding? Of course I take responsibility. I'm president, but it was horrible what to see, as you saw. To see people treated like they did, horses barely running them over, people being strapped, it's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. They will be an investigation underway now, and there will be consequences. There will be consequences. It's an embarrassment, but it's beyond an embarrassment. It's dangerous. It's wrong. It sends the wrong message around the world. It sends the wrong message at home. It's simply not who we are. Joe, you caused this disaster. You ended the stay in Mexico policy. It was working. You stopped border wall construction. It was working. You not only brought back catch and release, it's process and release. You're responsible. You and Kamala both invited people to come. Uh, those people will pay. I guess forget about due process or presumption of innocence. What about the people that ordered the don't drone strike, Joe? Oh, that would be you, the one that killed seven innocent children and humanitarian workers. What about the people who planned the botch withdrawal from Afghanistan that resulted in 13 dead American soldiers trapping hundreds of our fellow Americans behind enemy lines? What about the people that you abandoned in Afghanistan that have green cards, our Afghan allies, all their families? What about the people who caused this border crisis and told these migrants to surge the border? If I become president, think about it. According to Joe Biden, his twisted logic, a Border Patrol agent on horseback with a long rein is evil, but leaving thousands of Americans and our allies behind in Afghanistan that will be tortured and many killed by the Taliban that are very professional and businesslike as he, quote, turns the page. That's a success? Make no mistake, American enemies are all watching. All our enemies know, China knows, Russia knows, uh, the Iranian mullahs know, Kim Jong-un knows, that Joe Biden is a cognitive mess and weak and frail and incompetent on virtually every major issue. They don't respect and they don't fear Joe Biden. China, for example, oh, they've been circling Taiwan where they plan their reunification with fighter jets. What are you going to do, Joe? Because yesterday, the People's Republic of China, they sent 19 jets, and today they sent 24. They know you are too weak and spineless, and you won't lift a finger, will you, Joe? You'll abandon Taiwan, just as you abandon people in Afghanistan, your own citizens. Now, Joe Biden has harsher rhetoric for the American people than he does for the Communist Party of China. Hmm, probably China has compromising materials on Hunter. For example, Joe Biden now likes to lecture and scold Americans for not paying your fair share in taxes, which is ironic. I'll explain. Just say, hey, step up. Step up and pay like everybody else does. Look, I really mean this. And look at my whole career. I come from, a, you know, the corporate state of America. 
I just think it's about just paying your fair share for Lord's sake. Pay your fair share. Okay, Joe. How about this, Joe? How about you and Hunter? Why don't you both start paying your fair share and your taxes before lecturing the rest of us? And keep in mind, Hunter, your son, that's right, the guy that used crack that's probably compromised by Russia and China and Kazakhstan and Ukraine and Libya. Yeah, he's under federal investigation. Why? International tax evasion and money laundering. And tonight, according to the Congressional Research Service, nonpartisan, Joe, you yourself, you might owe up to a half a million dollars in back taxes. Hmm, I wonder if the AG in Delaware is going to go after you, like they're doing to Donald Trump in New York, for the exact same, quote, allegation. Fake News CNN, MSDNC, ABC, CBS, NBC, do you hear that? Maybe you should be speculating about jail time and indictments like you do with everything Donald Trump. Or does Joe just get the presidential protection program like he had the candidate protection program because he's a liberal Democrat and he's not Donald Trump. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.